Hi everyone. This video is the first video on genetic algorithms for optimization. Uh, this is just a little introduction before I teach you how to do genetic algorithms with Abacus and Python. And I just want to do a quick introduction that teaches more or less the theory about optimization and what are genetic algorithms and what's the point behind uh, them and why they work and why they don't work. The first thing we need to understand about optimization is the idea of finding minimums or maximums of a given function. So if I give you a function f of x that can look like this, the idea behind optimization is to find, let's say, the maximum within a domain. Let's say we're interested in studying the function between these boundaries. So that green dot here is our max, or let's say this purple one here is our minimum. So depending on the problem you're trying to solve, you might be interested in maximizing profit or minimizing cost, or in case of structures, you might want to maximize the material efficiency or you want to minimize the weight. Uh, these two problems are equivalent because instead of maximizing the function f of x, so let's say you can maximize f of x, you can just flip f of x and make it put a minus sign, so something that would look like that. So I'm trying just to mirror that function f of x and then you try to minimize. By minimizing the function minus f of x is the equivalent thing of maximizing the function f of x. So there's nothing particularly interesting about max or minimums. Now, the next thing I want you to understand is this simple function I draw here is a 1D function. So this is just one dimensional function. But you need to start thinking about optimization in the context of 2D, 3D, and so on. So we can think about 8D, that's actually the problem we're gonna solve. Uh, you can think about 200 dimensions. Obviously, after 2D, we cannot visualize it anymore, but the concepts that we're going to discuss today apply to even more dimensions. So when you go to 2D, let's go back into this graph here in green. You obviously have a few maximums here, here and here in, in red, and a few minimums, let's say, in black. There, 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 and there. Okay? And again, the objective of optimization is to find these maximums or minimums of a function. Now, what I want to discuss with you before we even talk about genetic algorithms is two types of algorithms called gradient-based algorithms. And this is versus what we usually call stochastic methods. Now, gradient-based algorithms, and I want you to understand this with me. So imagine that you have a 2D plane. And now I'm gonna try to represent this function that you see in green. I'm gonna try to represent it in 2D. So you have two variables, x1 and x2, and let's say this has certain values of maximums and minimums. So imagine like mountains in a map. So let's say this is the mountains that I'm trying to draw here in red. This is what we call the level curves. And obviously associated with each curve, there is a number that gives you the height uh, of the mountain, of the function that you're trying to, to optimize. So in this particular case, if we want to maximize these mountains and try to imagine you being a, a walker in this mountain. So if I put you here, you might be able to look into these uh, peaks and decide which one is the biggest and maybe walk towards the tallest peak. And let's say when you get to the top of the mountain, you might decide if that third peak over there is taller than the one you're in, and then you can optimize like this. The problem with computers, is computers can't see. Imagine you're a blind person trying to find the highest peak. The only thing you can do is to feel the ground around you and decide by feeling with your feet that to increase your position, to increase your altitude, the best thing to do is to walk in that direction. Okay? And then you are going to be in another position, let's say there, and you can do the same thing again. Try to feel around, which is the step that will increase your, your altitude and decide that you need to walk in that direction. Okay? So this is exactly how gradient-based algorithms work. You are in a certain position, let's put it uh, now here in green, and the only thing you can do is decide what is the step that increases your altitude the most, so what is the step that increases your gradient, that has the highest gradient. And then you decide, okay, this is the step I need to give, then you repeat this again, and you repeat this again, and you reach the maximum like this. The problem with these algorithms is that if there is multiple maximums, so if we, let's write it here, if there is multiple maximums, the problem with gradient-based algorithms is they guarantee local optima. So gradient-based algorithms always work to find the highest uh, mountain next to you, but you can never use them to find the 
global optimal. So the, the highest mountain in all the problem that you're trying to solve. So that's precisely the problem with gradient bays. They're super efficient, by the way. They're super fast. For some problems, they're brilliant. For the problems that I want to show you in these videos, they're not very good because you cannot study the entire domain. You have to study the domain one point at a time. And basically, you're always going to find the closest mountain next to you. You're never going to find the tallest mountain in the map. Okay? And this leads us to the stochastic methods. So if we go very quickly here to Wikipedia for genetic algorithms, there's two words you need to keep in mind when we talk about these algorithms. The first one is this meta heuristic. So you need to understand what the word heuristic means. And the other one is stochastic, which you might find somewhere here at the bottom. So if you go on Google and you Google the word stochastic, what you're going to find is it's basically random. So there is a little bit of randomness into this method. So if you go here to the word heuristic on Wikipedia, what you're finding is an heuristic technique is any approach of problem solving that employs a practical method that is not guaranteed to be optimal, perfect, or rational. So this is what is interesting about uh, genetic algorithms. Their solution is not going to be perfect. It's not going to be that elegant solution that you might be used to learning in, in school or let's say in physics, like I, uh, Einstein's equation are not heuristic. They're, they're they're perfect, they're rational, they, they have an underlying uh, fundamental that is 100% appropriate to the problem you're solving. While genetic algorithms, even though they are rational in a way, they're not perfect. They're using a different technique to solve the problem that probably would require a more elegant solution. But because we don't know that elegant solution, we use a, a, an heuristic method that gives us a practical solution until we figure out a better method for it. And that's why this is such an interesting method to learn. So as you can see here, this next sentence is pretty important. Where finding an optimal solution is impossible or impractical, heuristic methods can be used to speed up the process or finding a satisfactory solution. So that's precisely what I was trying to say. Okay, so let's go back into stochastic methods. And here I might add the word heuristic. So we have these two words in mind. And now we're going to talk about the idea behind genetic algorithms. So I'm going to draw the map here again. And I want you to imagine the mountains that you see here on the left. I want you to imagine that there, they are hidden here. But because we don't know the function, the first thing that we do in genetic algorithms is we study the space in random positions. So imagine that we're going to study only these positions. And here we're going to understand what are the positions that are close to a mountain, that are high, uh, and what are the positions that are low or not close to a mountain. Okay, And if you imagine these mountains here on the left, we can already decide that this one was pretty good and probably this one and probably this one would be the best three while the other ones would be not very good and maybe this one here would probably be decent. And then what genetic algorithms do is imagine what happens with uh, giraffes or turtles or animals in general is the most fit animals win the race of evolution and then they win the race of procreation of the idea of generating descendants. So if we try to make babies between these animals that we have here, we might we're going to end up with a new population of individuals that will surround the ones that we select, maybe with some uh, ones that are going in opposite directions. And then we can repeat the process and again try to find which are the ones that are giving us the best values, which will be these three, maybe these ones here. And finally, these ones here, right? Sorry, I'm using too many colors. But by using this iterative process, by doing these generations many, many times, we are going to achieve the maximum of our function without having to calculate gradients, which is very important when you don't know the function that you're trying to solve. Because this one is very nice because we can study the gradients. Like I can go here and say, what's the gradient here? Okay, the gradient is that one. If I want a minimum, I'll find that point over there. Or if I'm here and I say, what's the gradient? It's that one. So if I find if I want to go the minimum, I need to go in this direction. But if I don't know the function and I don't know the gradients, these genetic algorithms can help us find a solution to our problem. Before I close this video, I just want to show you the cycle of genetic algorithms that I'm, I'm going to show you in other videos, but just for the sake of complete this introduction. So the idea is we start a new generation, we start a new population, and then we evaluate the individual. So that's where we look at all the points and figure out which ones are the best. This is what we call the fitness function. So we try to figure out how fit are these 
animals. Let's say our in our case there will be some positions of columns, but how fit are these individuals uh, to solve the problem that we're trying to, to solve? And then we use selection methods to find the ones that are most fit. Uh, we make them reproduce, and then sometimes we add mutations so that we have a little bit of a, of a mix. And finally, we get back into the new generation. And if you run this cycle a few times, you're going to reach the optimal solution through these methods. Now, if you go back to the definition of heuristics, remember that you don't guarantee that the best solution that you're going to find through these methods is indeed a optimum point, okay? You're going to be close to it, but you're not going to have the perfect value that gives you the minimum. Well, actually, when you do gradient-based algorithms, if you run them a few times, very quickly, you find precisely this minimum with as many decimal points as you need, okay? So if you need this with six decimal points, you're going to get it very quickly with gradient-based algorithms. With this one, you're not going to get that. You're going to get a decent solution, but not a super precise one. Now, one last thing I want to talk about before we close this video is very important in genetic algorithm is the idea of exploration versus exploitation. And here's very important that you understand that we need a balance between these two. Okay, The idea of a good genetic algorithm uh, method is the one that balances these two things. And I want you just to give you with an example. So imagine that you arrive to a desert island and uh, you don't know anything about the island. The only thing you know is that you landed, let's say, on a boat. You landed somewhere here in this point of the island. So you have two choices. The first thing you can do is explore the island. Maybe start walking in this direction, walk around, try to figure out what's going on the island. The second thing you need to decide is to exploit the resources you find in the island. So you need very quickly to find shelter, to find food. But until you look into the entire island, you're not sure what is the best place to find that food and to find that shelter. So you need to balance these two things. Imagine that you're trying only to explore 100% and you don't do any exploitation. What you're going to do, you're going to look all around the island for a perfect spot and maybe you're going to be unlucky and the best spot in the island is going to be the last thing you find uh, and you die of hunger in the meantime. Well, if you do the opposite, if you do 100% exploitation and zero exploration, what that means is you're only going to explore the place you landed and you're not going to know what's in the island. You might be building a shelter, uh, while if you probably walked a couple of kilometers in, you would find that there's a shelter already built or there's a house there and there's actually other people that live in the island and you'll be saved. So what you want to do with genetic algorithms is a little bit of both. So you want to do, let's say, 50-50 or 80-20. It depends on the problem, What is how much you want to do of each. What you want to do is definitely explore a little bit in the beginning, maybe find out of the first exploration what is the best place you can spend the night, get some food, and then maybe explore a little bit more. In a couple of days, right, in five, six days, if you're trying to survive in a desert island, probably you would get to know the entire island and find out that that point there is the best place, right? And that's the idea. So I want you to have this in mind every time we talk about genetic algorithms. You don't want to be blindly searching everywhere, but you don't want to stop in the place that you are and assume that every place else is, has worse conditions than the ones you have at the moment. So keep this in mind while we are going through the, the next videos. And I hope you enjoy the, the videos that were the example that we're going to do. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.